This is Leicester Till I Die TV. Watch and subscribe on YouTube and listen on your podcast platform. Hi everybody, Jerry Taggart here. Now be sure to watch Chris and Leicester Till I Die TV by subscribing on YouTube and following them on social media for all the latest Leicester City news and information. Come on, you foxes! Strap yourself in because we're set up, switched on, and ready to go. Six, five, four, three, two, one. And it's live. Good evening, fellow Fox fans. How the devil are we? It's Tuesday night. It's seven o'clock. It can only mean one thing. It's me again. It's Lester till I die. You are watching and listening to the football show on Lester Till I Die TV with Chris and Chums. Indeed it is, and you can catch us live on YouTube, uh, Lester Till I Die TV. Please give that subscribe button a click. Uh, Facebook, Lester Till I Die, and Twitter, at Lester TID. Special show this week. I have got a very special guest coming in. Um, and let me just get the details up here. Oh, this is almost organised. We know him as Captain Fantastic, our special guest, the one and only Steve Walsh. Um I'm going to be honest with you here. I've met Steve a, a, a couple of times, and I've met other players as well. I mean, I used to live opposite Lenny Lover, showing my age there, aren't I? But you know, I've met uh, met Jerry. I've met um, uh, Paul Gascoigne. Couldn't understand a word he was saying, and, and that was when he was sober. I even met Vinnie Jones a couple of weeks ago. But there's only one player that really scares me. <laughs> and he does, and I've got a spare pair of underpants under the table. We'll bring him in now. Good, good evening, Walshy. How are we, uh, Chris? Yeah, good evening, everybody. Um, you know, it's good to be on your show. Um, okay. It's the second time now, Chris, isn't it? So uh, I'm getting it is. Uh, No, thanks for the intro. Um, you know, you, you do scare me. I'm not going to lie here, you know. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm quite soft off the pitch, Chris, but you know, when we're on the pitch, you know, we had to uh, use all the uh, intimidation and, uh, and and fighting talk a, a lot to, to win games in them days. <laughs> oh, I'm going to ask you about that because this, this, is, this is your brief history. Oh, no, it's not. That's not your brief history. Uh, this is your brief history with, with Leicester City, known as Captain <laughs> Fantastic. With us for four years from 86 to 2000, 369 appearances. 53 goals, not bad for a makeshift striker sometime. Used to be a record, <laughs> don't know if it still is, and you know it was going to get mentioned, 13 red cards. Yeah, well, to be honest with you, Chris, um, them figures are slightly wrong. The, the, the red cards are right. Um, <laughs> I, played, I actually played 449 games for Leicester and <laughs> scored 62 goals. So you were just slightly out, but... Listen, mate, um, I, I had to ring the historian at the football club to get that correct. <laughs> Do you, want to, you, you need to get on your Wikipedia page and update it then? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I think that's because people can edit it, can't they? So, uh, they can, yeah. Yes, yes. So don't worry. That's I got it from. I had a long and, and fantastic uh, career at Leicester and, um, mm -hmm. you know, many a years. Uh, I could have played a lot more games for, only for the injuries and red cards, really, if you think. I, I would have liked to have thought, you know, Casper Michaels nearly overtook my appearance record. Yeah. So, uh, he's closing in on that. I think he's, he, I think he might have just overtook me. I'm not sure, but this season he will. 
Um, but it, obviously, he's a keeper. You know, they yeah. don't miss too many games, do the uh, keepers? Not but, uh, really. I remember uh, Mark Wallington, and he, he that's was right, Wally, yeah. he was after years. But yeah. Let me bring my let me bring my colleague Josh in. He normally yes. joins me on his Hi, Josh. Good evening, Josh. How are you, Josh? All right, well, she, what, what an absolute pleasure. I've got to as I said to Chris the other week, he, he's, uh, he's making dreams happen, speaking to my uh, my heroes from the younger days watching you at Phil Street. So you, uh, you look too young to, to, to uh, watch me play. You look too young, mate. <laughs> no, no, no. It was uh, 32 this year, but yeah, I, uh, it was, it, I've gone to Leicester mid, mid to late 90s, so you were uh, what were definitely one yeah. of the heroes of the time, without a question. Well, that's got to be got to be one of the best eras, the nineties for for uh, for how many times we got to Wembley. I think it was seven times, wasn't it? In in ten yeah. years in that decade, incredible. Chris, I'm, 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 you are blessing, Chris. Am I? Yeah, is it, you 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 obviously think I am old enough to remember you from our conversation. <laughs> Thanks very much, mate. And you don't realise because obviously last week you, you you know you did go to see your dad. Totally understand that. Yeah. But Josh was in tears because he was looking forward to speaking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I've let you down, Josh. I've let you down, mate. <laughs> I won't do it again. Promise. <laughs> that, that's why I'm sending I'm sending Steve messages saying like, please come on this week. Don't let me down again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Can't do with Josh. You actually put this out, Chris. Does this go out to um, everybody? You know, because yeah, this, this is this is on YouTube. Yeah. yeah, this is on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter Live. Yeah, and like I say, and then uh, what I'll do is I'll send you the link for the YouTube one afterwards. It stays up yeah. on YouTube or, or, on the site. Yeah. But you were talking earlier, Steve, about um, being a hard man on the pitch, and I wanted to ask you this because I actually was due to ask you this. I'd won a raffle to ask the questions. It was yourself and uh, Jerry Tagger and Ian uh, and Matt Elliott, and right at the start of the season, you're doing a, a question and answer session on, on, on Zoom with the club. And I think I think you had the runs that night, so you couldn't. You weren't. <laughs> you were ill. You weren't able to come on. Was so, <laughs> this is the question I was going to ask you. Um, obviously. It uh, was the flap, the flap at Filbert Street. Let's get ready to rumble. Walsh versus Wright. The end of the most one of the most famous games at Filbert Street. The three all. The twenty seventh of August, ninety seven. We'd come back from two nil down. The most amazing game I've ever seen at that point, and or probably even since. My question was: Would you have decked Ian Wright at the end? I think there was, there was no, you know, <laughs> there was no, uh, <laughs> there's no contest there. That definitely, that would have happened. And you know that, Chris. So, uh, yeah. you know, he, he'd been, <laughs> it was funny because he'd been giving me a mouthful all night and he, he got subbed and um, they thought they got the game in the bag, didn't they? And, uh, yeah. you know, that 96 minute, I think it went to in the end. Oh. And um, yeah. we were... If, you know, left it till the last minute like we did Leicester in them days. But yeah. one of the best goals, you know, as adrenaline and the feeling you get in front of the cop that I'll ever score. And yeah. uh, that game was, uh, it's gone down as one of the the all-time classics um, in, in Leicester's history. You know, um, yeah. there's been some great comebacks, but that was such a, a, a special wow. game, you know. I think in the way it happened and the fact, I mean, I was just looking at, you know, 84 minutes gone, we're 2-0 down. Yeah, we get a we get a um, a goal uh, back from from Emil. Uh, you get one back, and then Matt, you know, Matt gets one back as well. In the meantime, Dennis Bergkamp got a third as well. He got the hat trick. I always remember Matt Elliott saying he was so grateful he scored because, of course, Dennis Bergkamp did him. Oh, when he did that fantastic yeah. over the head flip and <laughs> round him. Well, you, you see what happened there was um, right at the start of the game, um, Bergkamp. He started on my side of the pitch, you know, and yeah, yeah. Uh, I just give him a little headbutt just uh, on the back of the head. Just, um, <laughs> you do. And he, and he do. turned around to me and said, you're crazy, you are. I said, I am. And he, uh, <laughs> he walked across to Matt Elliott's side then and never came anywhere near me after that. So he, uh, <laughs> it was great. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, uh, and obviously oh. that classic goal that he scored is uh, yeah. another goal that's one of the one of the finest, you know. But uh, yeah. the Leicester fans, they'll only remember uh, that, that equaliser and the way it happened. Gary Parker's corner and Spencer Pryor. I had, had it back across. I think Pryor was trying to score there, but he, he <laughs> had it across to me and, uh, and stuck it in. So, like I said, the special moments in your life that, you know, I, I've, I've lifted the cups, I've 
played yeah. at Wembley against Derby, which I suppose has got to be the best game ever. But is it the best feeling? I think that Arsenal goal, you know, for me and the Fulham one, I needed to score that after a problem had, had uh, caused, you know, uh, mm. a cost us a goal and uh, it got yeah. us back in. There were two goals that in front of the cop, like I say, which uh, was, um, I can't describe uh, the feeling. It's, you know, it's just something you, you never get and, and I'll never get again, but it was brilliant. Yes, yeah. Josh, have you got a question for Steve? I know you have. Um, it's a rhetorical Plenty. question. Yeah, Plenty. Um, as, as you say, you absolute Leicester legend, Miss Leicester City to many. Um, being captain of the club for how long you were, what, what's, how, how much did that mean? How, how much did it mean to you to, to be captain? Because at the time, you know, you had many, so many good players around you, but for you to be picked as captain and leader, what, what did it, what did it mean to you? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I signed for Leicester City in in what 1986 in the summer, and I I came to Leicester just to play at the top level, you know. And we got relegated in that first season, if you remember, in the first division it was then. Um, and I just I needed to play at the top. I, like I said, I wanted to come here for for that reason. It wasn't money, uh, and you know, through the years it was so hard to um, you know to find that team until the 90s but to to actually you know captain that team in the end and stay here for 15 years the loyalty was always there you know me my father worked at british aerospace and for 50 years and only had about 13 weeks off holiday uh, sorry uh ill and um so it shows you where the loyalties are but yeah it, it to 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 actually walk that team out at wembley to lift the cup as captain uh lift the player one of the playoff finals because I, I remember being stripped of the captaincy getting two red cards in a week and um so yeah, we it was remember special. that for fans as well and i don't <laughs> think that yeah he shouldn't brian little he should have let me you know a captain uh that final against derby definitely should have done i uh, should have given me back he didn't and simon grayson was the captain but uh i'm still a bit aggrieved by that now uh but you know, at the end of the day, I, I got my opportunity, and um, and and it, it was fantastic to to be a leader, which which I certainly was on the pitch, and you know the liaison with, with between managers, and and you know it's quite an eventful roller coaster ride, as you could imagine. But uh, no, very proud, very uh, grateful that I had the opportunity and to become one of the one of the you know the top captains that have captained this club. So it, it's been great. I just want to ask, uh, Steve, you, you were there, you had four managers while you were there. And we, we, know, your feelings, you know, we know your feelings about Peter Taylor. Uh, that, <laughs> that, 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 I, I, I forgot to I bring the people on. on no, not. <laughs> <laughs> but Brian, you had Brian Hamilton, you had Brian Little, Martin O'Neill, Peter Taylor. Who who was the manager you... you, you, as, that you that, not that you got on with the best, but that you know that that um, inspired you the most. That got the best um, out of you. Yeah, uh, this is at Leicester you're talking about, aren't you? Yeah, um, yes, yeah, yeah. Th there was there was a lot of managers through the years that uh, obviously that I was involved with. I think there was about seven. I think if I'm, I'm correct, right, but, right. Uh, maybe maybe I'm wrong. Um, yours, Mark McGee. There was uh, there's some other ones as well. That, but I um, tried to no. forget Mark McGee. I tried. To, yeah. I hate Mark McGee for what he did. <laughs> yeah. So I'm trying to forget yeah. him. So did I. But, but <laughs> Brian, Little was, Brian Little was, you know, uh, he was the first one that really I connected well with, and we had a great understanding. And um, he was the one who gave me that chance up front as well, really, because in training he'd train and I'd train and it was like he was going back in time when he used to play a big uh, centre forward with, and he was small, you see. So, you know, big and little can seem to work um, yeah. very well in them days. Keegan, uh, you know, and yeah. so many other uh, strikers in a four four two system was always a, a good way to, to play. And uh, so, so Brian, I, I got an understanding. I'd, I'd be go around to his house. He lived in Barrow and Saw near me. Uh, I lived in Burton on the Wold. So I'd, I'd regularly meet him to have a chat about things and the team. And um, and then Martin came, obviously in '96, wasn't it? And yeah. uh, I think that Martin had a good eye for players that we bought. You, you know, Lennon, Savage. There was Muzzy. There was Elliot. Uh, all these signs that he 
well, were different class towards what uh, Brian Brian's budget was. Of course, it was different in them uh, days because we didn't have a lot of money. And um, you know, when Martin took over, I just wish he'd have stayed really because we had a we had a fantastic team spirit, as you all know. And uh, I learned a lot from Martin. It was very strange in his ideas and ways, but uh, you you knew with him where you stood. And um, yeah, so so them two are the standouts for me, really. Uh, yeah. Brian Hamilton, I've got to thank him for signing me down here. You know, um, yeah. and that and that's it, really. So uh, yeah, that they, they, you know, them two managers are the are the ones. Apart from Larry Lloyd, who when I was at Wigan Athletic signing my first pro contact, um, I've yeah. got to thank really. Yeah, Josh, have you got another one? Obviously, your time. We'll just stick with the time at Leicester. Um, you come up against many good strikers. You know the likes of and you know your likes of Andy Cole, Alan Shearer, Les Ferdinands, and such. Who was the striker who? You, you you least look forward to coming up against. Who gave you the, the hardest time? I'll tell you who that was. That would be uh, Gianfranco Zola. He was really, at that time, and when he was at Chelsea, he was, you know, for, for, for a big lad in the centre-back like like myself, Matt Elliott or Taggart or anyone, you know, them kind of players were, uh, and he was clever, don't get me wrong, he was quick off, off the, the, the first two or three yards um, and his movement was incredible. You know, he he has to be uh, one that I would stand out straight away that I didn't like playing against. Um, Bergkamp was clever, you know, he's a genius in his movement. Um, you know, one of the best players I've ever played against in a sense of how, how like I said, he's got a good football brain and he and he was just a, a clever player. So uh, them two uh, had stand out. You know, then you've got your Andy Coles, you've got your Shearers. You know, I didn't find him too uh, much of a problem, Shearer, although I was shoved up front sometimes out there and I should have been at the back really marking him because we we struggled against um, Alan Shearer. Teddy Sheringham was a terrific player. Uh, you know, Les Ferdinand at the time, a good header of a ball, big spring on him. And there was some, you know, some real good uh, quality, the, the Man United connection then, you know, you, you can go through all them. So there's so many, you know, when you look at it, I think the Premier League's changed a lot, as we all know. And, um, you know, at that era that we were playing, you know, you look at the Arsenals and the the, the team on a patch on on how good they were. Even Man United now, they're not they're nowhere near as good as what they were um, in our era. For me, uh, yeah. I'm obviously a little bit biased, but you know, I, I just think it was a, it was it, there was a lot better class in in that sense. Um, and and as we know, uh, football has changed. The modern modern game is different, but. Uh, they just, uh, but the, yeah, so so there were some classy players, and um, you know, I could probably reel some more off if I can think. But uh, Zola would, he was tricky, he was uh, elusive, and um, and he just he'd be through your legs and he's off, you know. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I'd have to take him off the block as well, you see. So, that was my tactics against him, <laughs> right through it. Josh, Josh. Can I just say, you've just upset Craig because I was about to ask his question next to who's watching us, and uh, you stole his question. <laughs> Oh, most words. I apologize. Oh, there you go. Sorry about that, I'm, I'm quickly typing away. Craig, have you got a second question? But yeah, uh, this yeah. question actually, first of all, comes from Facebook user. I don't know. We haven't put his name at the end of it. Um, yeah. But he's saying, uh, well, she, how much coaching did Martin O'Neill do? Or did he turn up 10 minutes uh -huh. before kickoff like Cluffy? Yeah, I think somebody's been reading a book somewhere there. Yeah, yeah Martin, <laughs> not so often he would um, uh, take any sessions. Um, hilarious, really, sometimes. You know, we went, I remember when we went to Man United once and um, we stayed at Haydock Park, you know, where the race course is um, in a hotel there, the Thistle Hotel. Chubby Brown was in the hotel and this was on Friday night. So we trained, or we, we, sorry, we, we travelled up and um, we, we went across the road with our boots and training and we went on the, on the, on the, uh, on the, course you know the Rahida Park race course the grass yeah. was that long and we had Martin O'Neill doing these unders and overs with the ball like very basic uh things that kids would do you know a little five a side with the grass that long and uh went and beat Man United <laughs> the next day so uh, if they'd have seen us and watched us the preparation for that game and you know but Martin was clever 
um, you know, even on that game, I'll never forget it because I was captain, I think. And um, if I remember rightly, we, um, me and him went into the referee's room, uh, as you did in them days. And um, when we came back, he wouldn't show me the team, but he sat us all down and he read the subs first. Then he went gigs, skulls. Uh, but and someone else in oh, Jesus Christ said, if you're scared of them now, well, you better get out there and sort this first lay 11 out first. And uh, <laughs> it would be valuable. So, um, I don't know whether that was the one that we drew to all or whatever. We had a good result though, and um, yeah. and that's how we were, you know, we, we were just sometimes thrown out on the pitch and uh, you get on with it. But we, we had a very good understanding, and uh, and Martin was he knew how to um, man manage um, his players. Yeah. Yeah, great, great years un, un, under Martin. But yeah. Craig, here he has come back with the second question. Josh, you've been let off. Um, uh, what was your what was your reaction when you heard we were signing uh, David Speedy uh, after what well, you did at Wembley? <laughs> well, is he it, did is dive it, is it anyway, so, um, as far as I'm concerned, it was a costly uh, error. But um, I, I do believe it was a dive. And uh, when he did come, the very first uh, day he arrived. Um, we had a bit of an argument, to be honest, and in the physio room because I think he was there was something he got a little niggle or something, and I got in to, to get strapping or something, and and he said something really sarcastic, so I pinned him down on the on the treatment table and said, "You're going to have to uh, <laughs> be careful what you say around here now." So uh, we got that straightened out before anything, and I told him that uh, it was a dive, and he said it wasn't. So, but we formed a, a you know a good partnership up front in, in the end. But uh, hmm. he was a um, you know speedy w with a drink in him. He was a handful. Uh, but on the pitch, what you know, he could finish, he could play, and and again, that that big uh, centre forward and, and a little one really uh, worked so well yeah. for us. They joked him with me, David Lowe with me. You know, it worked um, really well in some of the games that we played him. Yeah. So I hope that I answers want... Craig's question. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I want to. I don't know if anybody's got this out here. I think I think one or two will have definitely. Uh, Walsh is. Fifty Shades of Blue, and when I typed it into Google before we came live, and I typed in Walsh's Fifty Shades, it did come up as grey. So I don't know what you've been up to, Steve. <laughs> I don't know. No. <laughs> it's a great read. Uh, there's plenty of that in it. I'll tell you. No, it be, yes. Yeah, it's libel, that book, I think. so. Uh. <laughs> uh, it, it's still available. If you haven't got it, it is a great read. It's still available on Amazon if you want to go on and get a copy. Um, it is a fantastic – I love reading about players and what they've gone through. And I, I've got to bring this up, and I hope you don't mind me mentioning this, because it's about your personal demons, as you say in yeah. the book. And yeah. it's very close to my heart at the moment, because I'm going through a period at the moment with um, – depression and anxiety myself and i know that's something that you went through and I yeah yeah to be honest with you this I'm, i've still got that you know and you, it's not something you can just get rid of it's how you manage yeah. it but, uh, mm -hmm. i guess you know a lot of the problems i've got is through finishing football you know suddenly yeah. you know you're an outcast and you know you just don't know where to turn and there was there was not a lot available i had a you know, split up with a, an ex-wife. I had, uh, a, had a massive tax issue that that kind of took me to my knees. So uh, at the end of it, it was uh, doom and gloom for you know for quite a long time. And um, you're still fighting, you know, that depression and anxiety. But I can, I'm in a better, a lot better place than I was, you know. Um, yeah, yeah. And and I uh, and I deal with it a lot better. Um, I'm just having. I've got a neck problem at the minute. I don't know whether it's the headed balls or whatever. I'm going down to London through the PFA next week just for some uh, right. scans just to check that. I think that's muscular, so it's nothing too serious. Yeah. I hope that Good, um, yeah. from heading a, you know thousands of balls yeah. that I'm all right yeah, anyway. Yeah. I'm gonna have a, a brain scan on that. So so just to cover yeah. everything. So I'm not saying I've got anything there, but uh, you yeah. never know. <laughs> well, fingers uh, crossed you haven't. Yeah, I'm not forgetting yeah. things at the moment. So that's a, a yeah. very good sign of uh, being yeah. okay. But, uh, you know, yeah. I'm 56 and, it, and, and apparently it, when it does get hold, it, it kind of, it, it comes very quickly. So uh, I'd be in the category, but um, I just, you don't know yet until, you you know, things are, 
or uh, more advanced. But uh, no, uh, listen, life's um, getting better. You know, the academy that me and Muzzy work uh, for is, is really um, doing very well. We've just had a big recruitment day today um, and working back at Leicester now because the owners have been special to me. You know, they've helped me in yeah. a lot of ways in, 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 in bringing me back into the club where, um, you know, I suppose I left with a bitter taste because of what Peter Taylor did and what the ex-chairman allowed to happen, which was madness, really, um, from their part. And um, and it just plays with, with your life. You know, there's a lot of players, you know, are in a similar position when you finish, you, you know, just not knowing what to do. And, um, you know, like I say, on, on top of that, I had all the other problems. So, uh, but I'm, yeah. I'm OK. Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I couldn't head a ball anymore. I'll play football. My knees are knackered. <laughs> You know, I've had a lot of surgery, as you know, Chris, and, um, yeah. Yeah. you know, I've had about 25, 26 operations. I can't remember I'm exactly how many, so I'm paying the price for that now, but I'm still going. I'm still uh, yeah. still walking around playing golf, and uh, and life's good, yeah. yeah. I, I, I've good news, well, to make you feel better, I could never kick a ball or head a ball, and, <laughs> so don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> um, but no, it, it, is, it is something you can't... Um, turn on and off uh, as i'm finding out you know you, and and the slightest mm. thing se can set it off yeah, within the yeah. space of 10 15 minutes again yeah. as i found out yesterday but it, it's funny because you look at footballers and you know you're our heroes uh, as fans you know you're playing for our club you, you know you you're a, 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 a you know captain fantastic you were there you embody leicester city and you think you know, you've got everything. You know, especially more so probably these days with the with the stupid well, yeah. wages that are being paid. You know, and this, this is why I love reading this book. Yeah, careers are a very. Once you play football, you think your career is never going to end, and then when it ends, it, it's like it's just gone within minutes. So it's yeah. really weird that is. And um, footballers, the, you know, you get your pension at thirty five. You know, so. Right. It's a real uh, kind of short life, really, and I thought it would go on forever, and it, and it doesn't. So there wasn't, in them days, too many plans that you could get on course and do things apart from, you know, being a coach and doing things like that. But I think the PFA and the FA now, there's a lot more that they're doing for footballers and their understanding of, of um, how things work now and, uh, and life after football. So... Uh, like I say, you, you know, you've still got to find your own way. You've got to get out there and do things, and um, you know that's important. So, so yeah, I'm kind of, kind of my uh, my schedule's pretty busy, you know, and I'm not getting too much time to. I'm better when I'm doing something, you know. Yeah. So, yes, uh, yeah. although you know, you as you probably know, Chris, sometimes you, the only best place to be is asleep. You know, that's the only time I can. <laughs> You can yeah. feel good in yourself, and then, but then you wake up. You see, so uh, yeah, yeah. People who haven't got it will probably understand if they do get it. But no, you know, yeah. it's just the, a lot of it's in your mind yourself, and it's how you yeah. how you handle it. And I've always been quite strong minded, yeah. but uh, it's something that yeah. I'm fighting, and, and it's and it's and I'm not winning, but uh, I'm getting there. Mm. It is, I don't think it's a battle you ever win. And thank you so much oh. for being honest and open about that. You know, because yeah. like I say. Until you've got it, I don't think you can you can truly understand it. But no. I, don't, I don't want to uh, I don't want to make you feel worse. But um, <laughs> I have an Arsenal fan here. Oh, <laughs> and, um, God's sake! I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, she's lovely. In fairness, um, yeah. If I can, if the message comes <laughs> up, uh, Steve Molina, there. Good evening, Molina. Nice to see you on this channel. The channel is the best Foxes channel on YouTube. Thank you, Melina. The check's in the post. Uh, <laughs> coming from coming from Aguna. Um, you've missed the chat we had about you'll have to play it back afterwards because we did speak about the Ian Wright incident. So you'll have to uh, Yeah, we did. Yeah, I mean I, we Arsenal's uh, listen, Arsenal uh Melina were a team that I never ever got a point from. It was such a hard game. Mm. I can't remember getting one point from them, uh, especially away from I, I didn't win we didn't win any in my day. Um yeah. you know, when I was playing. Um, and, and it was a tough game and there were always uh, grudge matches with Arsenal in London and, uh, you know, and I've been involved in the Rumbelows Cup where I scored that equaliser. So I've been quite a pain in the side, you know, uh, through that 
your last minute three all draw, but they've always been classic games. And uh, whenever I've been down to see Tony Adams or uh, any of the, you know, Dixon and the Keon, they're, they're all uh, legends who work on match days. You know, the, I see them there and uh, they're all very complimentary and, uh, and really nice. So, you know, it's uh, life after football and we can talk about it now, but on the pitch, it was different. You know, we long, uh, long, we loved you for being a pain in Arsenal's arse. We really <laughs> did. You know? yeah, yeah. I'm I'm conscious of the time for you, Steve. So just a couple of questions. We're going right. to have one from a, from a viewer, and then we're going to get Josh in with um with a chance. Yeah. He's been very quiet, very good. Sat there watching. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm just taking it all into a Leicester legend speaking the way he is. He's absolutely fantastic. Brilliant. I'm just sat here in the water, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. And I take it the answer to this won't be Steve Bull. But who is Steve <laughs> Bull? Yeah. Well, to be fair now, Chris, he is my friend now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've read that. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, once we crossed that line onto the pitch, it was yeah. all out, you know, uh, war yeah. and uh, um, Steve Bull was a tough uh, player to to handle, and uh, I had to slow him down in any way I could, and that was kicking him off the pitch, you know, literally. And I've uh, still got tink yeah. marks in my head from head butting him and being sent off and things like that. So, but but no, my friend Muzzy, uh, Ian Marshall, and uh, Matty Elliott still, Jerry Tiger, they're all still around Leicestershire. Uh, yeah. Steve Gook is away in America now, uh, uh, system manager yeah, to a team that. in the yeah. MLS. Um, yeah. Who else would there be? I, I just see a few of the old legends, and Birch is still around, as, as we know. So, you know, still, yeah. but Muzzy would be, you know, I've been, he's been my partner for the last 10 years. So uh, he, yeah. he's he's got to be right up there. And, uh, and yeah, so he's just uh, local friends and um, friends I've met in Leicester. Um, yeah. and, and, and that's it, really. Yeah. Yeah. Josh, have you got what last one here for Walsh before yeah. we let him go? Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I was gonna ask I was gonna ask this one question, but I'll change it. Um when we had Jerry Taggart on here the other week, I asked him the same question, so I will ask you, Steve. Um if Brendan rang you up now and you're in you're you know, you're in your heyday, you're in your prime, and he said to you, Right, Steve, right, Walsh, I want you to start centre back for me. And you could bring back any player who you played with at your time at Leicester to come with you. Who would you pick? Now, I remember Jerry Taggart, he was going to go for Muzzy, but he said, we, well, he, Central midfield we weren't a position we're struggling with at the minute. So I think he went for Steve Guppy in the end. So who, who yeah. would you pick in the it, it Mine have been, been Muzzy. Is a, he had everything, you know, box to box, energy. He'd go through tackles. He could score terrific goals. Um you know, he was one of the fittest players and still is. You know, I see him running down the road, you know, near me. And, uh, he's a machine. He really is. He'd been yeah. one of the first on the team sheet for me. Um, you know, alongside me, Matt Elliott was the best I've, I've played with. I got a very good understanding with him. Uh, so that backbone of the team was was excellent. You know, Heskey was a an outlet at times. He was brilliant, you know, in them days. Mm. Uh, going back in time, you know, you look at... Gary McAllister, you know, yeah. players like that who were uh, terrific footballers and um, came from a different era. Um, and I, but, I don't, but I think if Brendan uh, Rodgers saw me play, uh, you know, uh, well, sorry, uh, would allow me to play, I, I think he'd, he'd understand that my physique in this modern day era wouldn't work. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice to uh, just uh, have one more chance at it. though. it would. It really would. <laughs> We'd have to sign you on a pay as you play because half the games you miss because you're right, Chris. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, I'll let you go because you, I'm watching the time now. But thank you so much for coming on. It's been yeah. a true pleasure to have you on. And I finally yeah. got you there. And I've, 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 I wore you down eventually, didn't I? You did, mate. <laughs> Anytime, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm always uh, around. So, yeah, give us a shout. But uh, enjoy Good. the show as well. It's, uh, I'll, I'll keep watching yeah. it now. So, uh, yeah. Josh, nice to meet you as well, mate. And uh, well, yeah, a, a, absolute, absolute pleasure, mate. It's been, it's been. I've just been sitting here listening to your stories. It's been absolutely fantastic. So, thank you. Really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. All the best of Steve, boys and, uh, and yeah, stay see you safe later. and all the best to your family. Bye bye. Oh, Josh, it's a good job we're only filming you from the waist up, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> 
tell you what, he's still a good look, still a good looking chap while she is, isn't he? I must say, he's still a he's still a good looking bloke, isn't he? <laughs> I tell you what, he, he's fifty six, I'm sixty. Work that out. You know what I mean? I, mean, I, think, he's, I think he's weathered a bit better than I have. Shall we just say that? You know? Oh, he, he's, he, I've, as I said, I've met him a few times. Um, Melina, thank you so much. You've come in at the end there with so many questions and everybody else that put a question that we didn't get a time chance to ask because Steve was sort of on a, on a tight, tight, tight time scale. He hasn't been home yet tonight, so I didn't want to keep him much longer. But thanks for all, all your questions. Melina, it's always great to have you on. It's nice to have somebody good looking on the channel when, you know, apart from me and Josh. <laughs> <you know. laughs> <laughs> Josh, he says, Brett says here, Josh's hands remained in show all interview. They're fake, mate. They are fake. His real arm goes down into the middle of his hoodie. Don't you remember leaving that, Brett? <laughs> but, uh, well, well, I'll have to have a word with Steve, see if we can get Muzzy on next week. That would be. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you what, if, if you were to do that, Chris, that would. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't know what to do with myself, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should change the subject. We're going to have, um, we're gonna have a quick break and then we'll come back with the second part of the show. <laughs> I think Josh needs to just go and have a quick a quick cold shower as well while we have this break. <laughs> we'll be back after this. Hi, Alan Smith here. Yes, be sure to watch and listen to Chris on Leicester Till I Die TV. You can also subscribe on YouTube and various social media channels. Of the Foxes. Leicester Till I Die podcasts on the Apple iTunes, Spotify, Google, Anchor and all podcast platforms. It is. So let's get back to football business. Um, not that Steve's not football business, of course. I don't mean that. And seriously, guys... I have got so many of these, not of this particular book, I've just got the one, but so many. I love reading autobiographies about about Leicester players. I, you know, you, you get the, the Ian Wrights and the Alan Shearers, but generally they are, it is interesting to see uh, how the, the other half live. It really is. And for just for Miss Molina here, um, I just want to show that picture there. I don't know if you can see it. Um, oops. That one just there, that was Ian Walsh scoring the equaliser against Arsenal, Miss Molina, in the 3-3 in 1997. Just thought I'd show that as it, as it, as it fell open at that page, you know. Um, and then uh, where, where's one more to show you. Um, I can't find it. It must be somewhere else. But it, it was the um, – oh, here we go. Here we go. This, this, this is uh, – that there, Miss Molina, if you're still watching, that one just there is the bust up after the game between <laughs> Walsh and Ian Wright. <laughs> People remember that for the six goals. I remember it for the fight afterwards. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it's a great read. And, you know, you think these players have got it all, you know, like, you know, uh, Josh there, you know, we look up to these players. We think that, you know, almost like the gods, aren't they? And, you know, they mm -hmm. do. They're only human. And, and he was... Shat upon by a great height by uh, Peter Taylor, and um, just one of the reasons I think uh, we all we all hate the guy, uh, as well as you know what he did to the club, but what he did to a lot of the players personally. Josh, let's get something and let's have a look at what is going to be happening for the rest of the season. It's top four time. Things are getting a yep. little bit squeaky bum, if I'm honest with you, aren't they? I mean, you know, if we bring the table up here. Uh, Man City, well, you know, they could have they could have just given us those three points. I think it was very selfish of them. Just let, let us win. They're still going to win the damn thing. United managed to sneak past Brighton. They're four points ahead of us now. Yeah, we're on fifty six. West Ham. Oh, I was. I've never wanted Wolves to score as much as I did last night. Three nil down. Got it back to three two. Couldn't quite sneak a point. But West Ham. Are, are coming up there on the outside, Chelsea 51. It, it's you know, still 24 points to play for. It's tighter than I thought it when I looked at that. I'm like, shit, this is really actually tighter than I thought it was. It is getting tight, mate. It's um, like you say, 
I mean, the thing is, West Ham, they look really, I mean, they're looking absolutely on form, fantastic at the minute. Um, but they do, they do look like, they, they, you know, they, to, to concede a goal, they've always looked like they are going to concede. So then you say, you know, you like, you've got your likes of Everton still there or thereabouts. Chelsea aren't going to go away. Spurs, you know, I know they slipped up at the weekend, but um, again, it's they're another team that you think they'll, they'll sort of end the season strongly. And like you say, you know, we've got Spurs in last game of the season. So it's, uh, it's, it, it's definitely, it's going to be closer than what, like, what we'd like anyway, put it that way. I mean, last season, it was different because last season we had a gap to protect. We've never really yeah. had that big gap this season that we had last season, which maybe has made us slightly less complacent, if you like. You know, when you sort of yeah. 10, 12 points clear, as we were at some points last season, you're thinking like, well, we've just got to carry on playing. Where this time, you know, if there's one slip up, that it could really, really cost you. So you've got to be be on your toes. And, and we did say before the game on, on Saturday, didn't we, that really it was a free hit, this this game, or that the yeah. Man City game, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I thought it was. I mean, as we said before, I thought it won them games. I mean, I, I, I had us down to win. I thought it was a game we could have won um, purely for the fact that, you know, they, they've been recently beat by Man United and we've beaten before this season already. But, um, you know, again, it was just one of them games where if, we'd have cut, if we could have come out of it with, for, with, with a point, you'd have been more than happy. It'd have been a bonus. But, um, like I said, you know, the way they're playing at the minute and it, and the, the two previous results prior to that in the league, you know, the Brighton and Sheffield United game, which, you know, luckily we've won, um, it sort of allowed it to be a bit of a free. If, if yeah. you know, had we not won both of them games or we've got a point out of the two, then you look at Man City and think, God, you know, it's a game where really we, we could be coming away. But as I say, I think the West Ham game coming for the weekend, it's to me, it, it, it means a lot more than the Man City game did, put it that way. Yeah, I mean, do do you think? Uh, I mean, I mean, to me, and we're going. We'll have a you know quick chat about the Man City game. Mm-hmm. They've only been beaten three times this season. I know we did it once. So losing to them wasn't a a you know it was it wasn't well, a really game because, yeah you know, yeah of course we have actually beaten them once. But you know, to me, and this this is a bugbear of mine, and, and I'm going to come on and, and you've I know I've already shown you that the, the, the the graphic that I'm going to bring up in a second. Were we that bad against Man City, or was it the fact that Man City were just too good and put us in our place? You know what it was, I think. I mean, for first off, we couldn't get the ball, could we really? It, 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 literally, every single time, you know, whether they'd... You know, they'd kick the ball out of play. The uh, sky cut to a replay, cut back, and Man City got the ball. And I lost count of how many times that happened, especially in the first half. Um, we, we all know how we all know how, how well Man City can, can keep the ball. The, the range of passing and you know the one touch movement here and there is unbelievable. And we saw that we saw that on the game on Saturday. But I expect just. Not to go toe to toe with them because I think it, Man City team. If you go toe to toe with them, they catch you on the counter attack. They've got that many good players that can pick out passes, mm. you know, and get him behind. Then we'd have been destroyed. So I thought defensively, we up until the first goal, I thought we we're doing actually okay. But we just invited, we invited on too much pressure. We sat too deep. Um, there weren't really much of a press until we went a goal down. That was when we sort of come out of the shells a bit more, which is what you yeah. expect anyway. Um, I think as I think as <laughs> It's 50-50, really. I think as good as Man City were, we made it easy for them, if you know what I mean. I don't, I don't, to be fair, I don't think Man City really got out of second or third gear. It, they sort of won it at a canter, really. But um, that side of things were disappointed. I expected the performance to be a little bit better. I thought we'd have, I thought we'd have more, create more chances than what we did. But overall, that you can see why they're going to be champions. They're just different class. I mean, as I said just before then, it really is a bugbear of mine, and it always has been, that, and I know players, in fairness, don't go out not to perform. I, I, mm. I, I get that. You know, nobody said, you know, none of us think we're going to have a bad day at the office these days. It, it, it happens. But, you know, when we had the great escape year, we were in that relegation zone, and I used to drive up from Leicester and back again every game, and it was, well, say the weekend games, it was a seven-hour return journey for me. 
But, and we were losing week after week after week. You know, me and my son would be driving back down and, oh, we've lost again. But every week we were putting the effort in, you know. And, then, yeah. and this is what I don't get with this team. And what I don't get with this team is how it can change match to match, week to week. You know, we can play absolutely brilliant, let's say, on a Tuesday and then absolutely shite on the Sunday. I mean, let me just bring the, these figures up here. Um, this is the possession, the shots and the on target. And I know Brad, if he was now, would be pulling his beard out and um, saving <laughs> a bit of money on shaving. But he doesn't like stats. But, you know, Man City, and forget the possession. I mean, you, know, you can see from the Sheffield United, and possession means nothing, absolutely nothing. But... Man City, five shots on target. Uh, sorry, five shots, only two on target. We did not even have a shot to take it out Vardy's because it was obviously cancelled off. We didn't even have a shot in the first half. Man United, yeah, we won. We had 11 shots, five on target. Brighton, you know, we, 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 we sneaked past them, two on target. Mm -hmm. Burnley, seven. Arsenal, three on target. That is not what you would expect from... A Premier League team, that, and I know you know you, you, it almost like it's papering over the cracks because, well, we're in the top four, we're through to the you know semi finals of the FA Cup. Yes, we are, but it all depends which Leicester turns up in the cup game or which Leicester turns up against West Ham. We've lost to West Ham once this season. Am I being unfair here with this or, or what? <coughs> Swings and roundabouts for me, really. I mean, yeah. had you not got the stats up there and you, and you just got the Man City stats, you'd look at it and think, well, yeah, it's Man City. But as you say, yeah. you know, it, it, it surprised me. It surprised me looking back to see that we had less possession against Brighton and Burnley than we did against Man City. That, 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 that shocked me more than anything. Um, I know I know they are away. They are away games, but without yeah. fans... You know, you can yeah. only you can only really use that excuse a certain amount of times, really. But mm -hmm. I think from I mean, looking at the Man City game, you could see you could sort of see it, it were obvious the way we'd set up. It would just sort of stay in the game as long as we could and and hit them on the counter. Prime example: the um, the Vardy goal that got disallowed right for because he were offside. That were on the counter attack, and then just sort of try and hang on, hang on in the game as long as we can, and then just if, you know if we can if we can break, then great. Um, I think I think you're right, but I think the cert, you know m missing certain players through injury. I know you know you can't keep using that excuse, but I think we've missed Harvey Barnes and what he can bring, what he could bring for us since he's been injured. Obviously, we've had Madison out for a few games now. I know he come he come on on um, the Man City game and he did all right. He had a, he had a couple of chances. I know he blazed one over, but I think, um, he, I think he had he had more shots when he was on yeah. than the rest of the team put together for the previous seventy odd minutes. You know? Yeah, and, and and I think you know him being back and you know God knows how long, how long Harvey Barnes is still is still got to be out. He's still going to be out for. Um, I, think I think he's out for the rest of the season, Harvey Barnes. Yeah, yeah. which is unfortunate because I think you know we, I'd be still got you know the likes of Barnes and Madison playing week in week out for us I think you'd see he's creating a lot more but you, you're right I think especially like you say the likes of the, the Brighton and Burnley game it's you've got to be looking at them sort of teams you know it, it, yeah. it's no, no games are gimme in the league this season we've said that before but they're yeah. the games where you think God yeah we need to be sort of if we're not winning, just at least creating plenty of chances and but I mean to, like I say to look at them stats there it's, it's it, it, it is unbelievable, really, but it's been a strange season. It, it really has. Um, but yeah, I know what you mean. I just, I, I'd like, I'd like to see us, especially on Saturday. I'd like to have seen us gone for it a little bit more, even going a goal down. I know we had a couple yeah. of chances, but just, just to be a bit more braver, I guess. I, I know that. Um... I mean, you know, Craig said this before, and, and Brad and, and what have you. Goal difference is, is a big thing, but I'd as soon have lost three nil going for it than than two nil. Because I mean, Brendan has, and I love Brendan to bits. And sometimes, like when we played Arsenal, it works. But when we play the big teams, he seems to like to hold on till get to half time. Hopefully, it's nil nil, and then maybe you know do it in the second half. You can't do that against the big teams, can you? You, you can't. Um, I, I think another thing as well, which you may, maybe 
personally why I expected more against Man City because we'd sort of come off the back of an international break and the game prior to that had been the, the Man United game in the FA Cup where we played outstanding. You know, we were yeah. um, the game plan, it weren't brilliant. So maybe I was sort of going into the Man City game looking at that United game thinking, yeah, we you know, we can really have a go at these and we've got the players to do it. So, you know, it might, might have been that play playing on my mind a little bit. Um yeah. <sighs> It is, it's a strange one, really, because, like you say, I think um, as as inconsistent as we, we have been at times this season, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we've like you say, we still sort of managed to pull results off here and there. But then you look at games where we should, where you look at, well, we should, we should be beating these, like you know, Leeds at home and Fulham yeah. at home, the games that we lost. So it's just because you know, any anything can happen, really. But I'd sort of. Like I said, I said in the um, pre-match show on Saturday before the Man City game, as long as we performed and put in a performance, I, I don't, you don't mind losing. But we no. didn't really see that defensively. Like I said, I didn't think we were that bad until the first goal. I thought we defended yeah. quite well. Um, for Farner, I thought Fafana had a cracking game. Um, yeah, yeah so th- there are games where you think, yeah, you, you want to see a bit more attacking and just taking a bit more calculated risk more than anything. Yes, totally, totally agree with on that. I mean. Looking at the um, run-ins now of all sort of our challenges, <coughs> if you like, for a top four place, and the, it, was, mm-hmm. it was it was in the national newspaper uh, a, a couple of weeks ago, and it listed all, all the run-ins and it rated the difficulty of all of them. Um, I mean, Man United they rated five out of ten, um, Chelsea five, we- oops, wrong wrong mouse, West Ham. Uh, four, they probably uh, Tottenham three. They probably got the easiest. Everton six, Spurs four. They've got an easy one. Villa seven, Arsenal seven, and us seven. You know we we've not got an easy run, and we know about those last you know the last three games. But mm-hmm. like I say, you know th- this is, this is our run in. Um, I mean, freaking West Brom did Chelsea. I mean, they did us a really big favour at the weekend. West Brom, yeah. Um, yeah. With that result, you you know didn't see that coming. In fairness, um, no, hopefully it's, really not. Not, it's the last two are from them. But you know, if we play like we played on Saturday, those what we would call and no disrespect to the clubs easier games, then we, we're going to struggle even in those. And if we can do the Man United form in the cup, it, you know we we should be home and dusty before we have to face them again. You know, in the last three games, you're right. I, I think, like you say, taking the last three games out, um, or just putting them to one side for the minute. You look at them five before. You know, West Ham, West Brom, Palace, Southampton, Newcastle. Um, you, yeah. you look at them thinking, well, West Ham, Southampton, they're tricky games. And again, no disrespect to West Brom, Palace, or Newcastle, but you know, if 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 we do want to finish top four and want to consistently be a top four team, then you're looking at them games thinking, well, we, we need to be winning them. Um, yeah. Again, that's no disrespect to them because anything can happen this season, as, as you say, with the West Brom game on Saturday against Chelsea, which were incredible, really was. Um, it, it's I, I, I really hope we've sort of learned as lesson from from last season, and like you mm-hmm. said, um, like you said, um, 10, 15 minutes ago, with regarding because we've not got such a big points total between ourselves and the teams chasing, you think this season, like the lads are going to be like, right, we, we can't let, we cannot let this slip this time. We have got sort of something to, to cling on to rather than like you say, last season, what were it, 10, 12 points. And you thought, well, we could afford, we could afford to lose a couple of games, but not too many. And then it just, you know, it, it went kaput for us. So hopefully, like you say, I think it, I think it sort of goes in our favour a bit more because the, the, the points gap's only like five points now um, between us and West Ham. And then, like you say, you've got Chelsea and, and the Liverpool coming up as well. So you like to think, well, we're going to go into each game thinking, right, win today, extend, you know, hopefully extend the points. You get other teams doing your favours by beating the chase and pack them fair enough. But as long as it's in our hands, mate, as, as long as we can take care of our own business, then everything else just sorts itself out. So we've just got to, yeah. fingers crossed, we can, we can, we can, like I say, just get over the mis- well, say misery of the the, um, the unfortunate end to last season and get the job done this year. We, we we say about our last three games, and I think the fact that it is just the last three games altogether there. I mean, Tottenham, 
apparently all their players have been banned from having dogs because they can't hold on to a lead. <laughs> but, 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 thank you, guys. I'm here all day. Um, looking at Man United, I mean, they've got to play Tottenham this weekend at Tottenham. Mm -hmm. um, so you would hope that would that would be a difficult game. And then they've got Burnley, Leeds, Liverpool, Villa. So they haven't, you know, th th those could be, and then ourselves, those, those could be sort of tight games. The last couple yeah. of games for them all is easier. Chelsea have still got to play um, West Ham, Man City, Arsenal and Villa. So, mm -hmm. you know, that they're, they're, West Ham have still got to play Chelsea, Everton. Well, they're dropping off a little bit. So they, they've probably got quite an easy one, like I said before. Spurs, they've got Villa Leeds, they've got Man United. Um, those are the three for Spurs. Uh, hard ones. Palace. Oh, sorry, Everton. I've got Palace. Sorry, <laughs> putting Palace up there. You know, Everton have got um, Villa, Arsenal, Tottenham, one after each other there, and then mm. West Ham. So that's going to be four, and they finish at Man City. Um, Villa have got um, Liverpool, Man City, Everton. Um, Man United, Tottenham. So you know, it's there's a lot of teams around us are going to be playing each other. Yeah, and, and like you say, at the end of the day, only one of them can win. Obviously, if it's a draw, then they get a point each, and yeah. they're not obviously, they're obviously gaining gaining on us as long as you know we're we're either drawing or winning. So it's mm. it's going to be really 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 close, mate. Um, uh, you, you, you even look at the Man United Spurs game this week. You know, we obviously we're, every every Man United every footballing fan apart from Man United fans love it when United get beat. But for me, I'd say the Man U beat Spurs this weekend. Hopefully, we can we can get the business done against West Ham, and then you sort yeah. of pull them pull them away further from. So, you know, it'd be nice to finish second, but if as long as we finish in the top four, mate, I'm not fussed where where we come. We could finish fourth. You know, yeah. You, so yeah, for me, you know, you, you, hopefully United could do us a favour this week. As long as we can get a win as well, then you know you pull yeah. even further away. So it's it, 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 it like you say, mate. It, it's going to be really, really too too close. But hopefully we yeah. can. Um, Get, get the job done before the last three games so we could sort of enjoy them, take them for what they are, and I think, well, we might as well have a go. So, I mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Because at the end of the day, you know, City have won it. Whether we finish second, third or fourth, people don't, people don't remember. People outside their own club don't remember yeah. that. They remember the winner yeah. and who, who went down. That said, let's be honest with you, we've got to remember we are Leicester City. And for yeah, Leicester yeah. City to finish <laughs> second, I mean, you know, apart from when we won it, our best time was a second in, in the 30s or whenever it was. You know, we're Leicester City, so to whether we come second, third or fourth is a bloody good achievement for us. The Massive. only thing as people, as people often say is if we finish fourth this season, if one of the English teams win the Europa or the Champions League, that might affect us. But you can't, you know, that's in the future, you know, you don't know if that's yeah. going to happen or not. But, uh, yeah, it is, for me, a, a big saving grace is, and I hadn't realised until sort of looking at it uh, today, of how many they, um, how many teams, you know, play each other. And it, it's got to add to another gap, like you said, Josh, totally agree with you. Let's have a gap between us and those behind. And yep. not worry, you know, if we catch Man United, we catch them. But if we don't, we don't, as long as we've got that gap behind. Exactly, yeah, because, I mean, the thing is now, <clears throat> you're thinking, you know, if Man City weren't, weren't running away with the league, then you sort of think, God, yeah, if we could catch second and then say if Man City are only four or five points off, yeah. and you think, yeah, you know, we could, we could try to push for that. But Man City, that clear, finishing second, it, it, it's not going to mean much different, really. I know you obviously get a bit more, you get a bit more money for the, obviously the higher up the table you finish, but it, it, Champions League football's it, it's mega money anyway, regardless. So yeah. finishing anywhere in the top four is going to be like you say, it's it's for us. And you know, I was thinking about the other day where you know we were going to League One games against the likes of Scunthorpe and Yeovil yeah. Town, and you know teams yeah. like that, and then you think, God, like how far we've come in the space of you know six seven years it's it's, yeah. it's 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 incredible it's absolutely unbelievable so and to, to think that you know last season we were a bit disappointed because we we finished yeah. fifth really in the, in the best league in the world it's it's crazy really 
It, it, it is. And good evening to Luca there. Thanks for joining us. Um, you know, it is how far we, we have come. Um, because, you know, all those years ago, we'd have been, we'd have never dreamed we'd be having this conversation. Oh, we're only going to finish third. First world problems here, really, isn't it? You know, yeah. you know I'm, I'm driving to Yeovil, but hey, stick with us because in a few years' time, we'll be talking about finishing behind Man City and Man United and yeah. qualifying yeah. for the Champions League. Exactly, mate. And just, just just quickly on that, you know, obviously, whenever we lose, uh, it, it really does mend it, and, it, and it does ruin my weekend. But I, I sort of, I'm of the mindset now, like I sort of look at us and look at the way the clubs run and what we have got going for us, and then you look at the likes, you know, you like you, you know, you know, your Boltons that were, you know, a big yeah. force in the Premier League not so long ago, really, and yeah. where they are now. So I think the position where we are financially with the owners, we've got the new training ground and such, and yeah. push it, pushing for top four in the Premier League. Just e even being in the conversation, it it's fantastic, really, and it it's the it's the best times I've ever had being a Leicester fan. So hopefully it can continue. Just got to realise how lucky we are, I guess. Oh, we do, and you forget. And as fans, you know, I have always say, if you look up fans in the dictionary, it says fickle. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally and you know, you you have success, and then you want more success, but it yeah, never happens like that. We went down to the third tier. And we turned it around really quickly. When you look how long, Leeds were down in the third tier before us. They mm -hmm. came back up after us. And they've only just this season come up into the, the Premier League. Man City exactly, yeah. were down there. They only got out the third tier via a, a dick-off penalty in the playoffs. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, there's a lot of clubs. And like you just said then, the Bournemouth, Portsmouth in a, in a cup final not so long ago, they're down there now. You know, yeah. it, it's... <sighs> The, the, you know, there's the old saying, isn't there? That the, the higher you you go, the the further you've got to fall. And um, yeah, exactly. We've yeah, got, we've right. got to enjoy these times, and we won't. We're fans. We'll moan all the time, you know. And, <laughs> but, and, and I think it's like, yes, we lost to Man City. You know, yeah, it was disappointing the way we lost. You know, but it was Man City. They are yeah. the best team in the country. The way they play. I mean, it's like Liverpool last season. Sometimes. Even as Leicester fans, you have to take your cap off and go, yeah, they were just brilliant, you know. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and Man City are. So, you know, when, when you've had time to sort of sleep on it for a couple of nights and, and get drunk, you tend to sort of look at it and think, yeah, OK. <laughs> like you say, that was Man City, let's move on. But it really is. I am, in a, in a, in a bit of a way, I am dreading West Ham. It's going to be nerve wracking. It, it really is. I think, like you say, about the Man City game, I sort of, because it was more hope than expectation, I sort of watched that game and uh, my anxiety is always bad watching Leicester. It always is. But that was sort of, <laughs> that, 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 that was sort of game where I could sit back and I thought, well, if we get something, we get something. But the West yeah. Ham game, for, for what it's going to mean and for the chance, the, the, it's a massive chance for us to pull even further away because, man, I mean, as, you, as we all know, as, as, as fans, West Ham are on they're on a cracking run of form and you know the yeah. players they've got really hurt is like you know who'd have thought who'd have said this time four or five months ago that Jesse Lingard would be on form one of the best players in the Premier League at the yeah. minute for the way he's playing um it, you, you you know you wouldn't believe it um it's it's just it's a massive massive game and it's going to be one where for 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 the ninety plus minutes, it's um, I'll probably be watching. I'll probably be watching from behind my sofa, to be honest with you. <laughs> Unless you go three or four nil up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, as you know, if you're trying to help me here, and if anybody out there, I'm trying to get a, a West Ham fan to come on the Opposition View show on Thursday because I'd love to talk to them because I can remember we were linked with Jesse Lingard and every city, every. I don't think there was a post that actually said, yeah, we should go and get him. Yeah. A couple of them were like, well, whatever. But most of them were like, he's rubbish, he's passed it, he's had it. He, you know, we don't want players like that, has been sort of thing. Um, and look, they say, look what he's doing. And, and West Ham United, they hated David Moyes. They hated him with a passion, you know. Mm -hmm. But having said that, he's, he's got them to fourth. <laughs> they, they've got to. They've got to. Surely they. You know, we, we're pinching ourselves. They've got to be doing self harm. Surely. <laughs> you know. You know what? As well, I, 
obviously th- this weekend's totally different. I-, I-, I wish them nothing but bad luck this bad luck this weekend. Cause obviously, <laughs> we're playing them. Do. Well, you know what? We're, we're Stammer a team that I, I genuinely I-, I look at me in the Premier League that you know f- fan base wise and I suppose the history behind them. They, they are a massive club, so they- they're they're a team that I are. I know, you know, before, you know, this few seasons before this one, they've sort of been battling relegation. I always sort of want West Ham to stay in the Premier League because it's it's a it is a big game, West Ham. It, you know, like I say, history wise, it really is. So, I think the ideal scenario for me this season is, you know, Man City going to win the league regardless. If we finish second, great. If not, so you know, you've got Man United second, we finish third or fourth, and then West Ham are in there with us. Because what a statement it'd be for you know the the so called smaller clubs like us and West Ham to be in Champions League next season it'd, yeah. it'd be unbelievable absolutely fantastic it, it really would I don't want West Ham to do it because I think it takes the shine off us a little bit <laughs> because mm. because, because <laughs> we're, at the, we're at the point now where you know we're going to stop so I love being little old Leicester I love the fact that <laughs> you know, I, I'm being totally selfish here but I do this is Leicester <laughs> we're, we do we know, I, I want us to do well and I, I want don't want West Ham to get any glory, you know. Let it be Chelsea, Tottenham, Liverpool, whatever. Yeah, come forth. But I, you know, it, it should all it should all be us. That I know that's selfish. But uh, and talking of selfish, going to say good evening to my daughter Heather. Where's the <laughs> present? <laughs> He still owes me a present. What are you doing on here on YouTube when you should be coming around here with my present? Heather, you, you, your disappointment to me as a child. What are you doing? <laughs> I love you, Heather, really. I really do love you, Heather. <laughs> but where's my present? <laughs> no, but, uh, but, no, but yeah, that's why I, I wouldn't want to see West Ham do well. And I wouldn't want to see Everton do well or Villa, you know. And as much as I don't like the big six, I want us to be. I want it to be the big six plus Leicester. <laughs> I, I, I I totally get where you're coming from, but another reason for me is because you know they've been talking about this change of format to the Champions League. I know we spoke about it um, previously on the. I think it was the last Tuesday show. It might have been Saturday. Yeah. Um, yeah. Again, it'd be it'd be another another big middle finger to to the European elite to have the you know like say like the likes of West Ham in there because again they they look at that and think Jesus Christ like you know. Arsenal ain't going to be in there this season. Spurs, yeah. Chelsea, it, it really wouldn't. It sort of make up like. <laughs> I, I think. I think. The, unfortunately, the way the way Champions League and European football is going, it, it's, it's heading towards a, a breakaway <coughs> European Super League. It, it really is, and I could see that happening in the next four or five years. So, it'd be, I think it'd be it'd be a big up yours to to UEFA if uh, as a as a West Ham to get top four yeah. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Brett, Brett Ahern, just quickly, it was, he, he came to Bournemouth and you didn't let me know, Brett. You were naughty and you came to Bournemouth. You could have let me know I could have been naughty and come out and met you. <laughs> <laughs> didn't say that live on video, did I? Yeah, no, Brett's, in, Brett's in my bubble. Let's just say Brett's in my bubble, OK? <laughs> hey, have a, th- have, a think, have a think, Josh. We might have to do a, a watch-along on uh, Sunday. De- definitely, mate. Yeah, I- I'm, I'm, yeah. I- I'm down for it, but I- I'd be a bloody mess, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say that because I'm you, you, I-, I-, I literally all I it was like, you know, you know, when you have these screensavers and you've got yeah. like fish on with the tank and they've got all the fish swimming along. Yeah, when I was talking to Walsh earlier. I felt like I'd got one of those because you were just sat there with your mouth open. Like, mm. <laughs> it, it, honestly, just going back to it, incredible, mate. I, I could, again, you know, and I've got to thank you for this, you know, the chance to be able to even just sit in and listen to stories from from players that are, you know, I still look up to now, you know, Walsh, he's, he's, he's Mr. Lester, you know, he, he's, he's, he's yeah. sort of, he, he is, he is the, the captain, you know, and, and he, he embodies, like you say, he embodies the whole of, the old of Leicester City, and even now, you know, listening to him then, and you can see mm. how passionate he is. He, he is yes. still about the club even now. So unbelievable, mate! Absolutely fantastic. Really was. Yeah, Brett. He said it was bloody cold. You should be. We've had snow this afternoon. Never snows down yeah, here. Ten have. years have been down here. This is the second time, but we've had snow. About four o'clock, it just came from absolutely nowhere. It stopped now and it's gone. But uh, anyway, uh, Chris Forry in the Weather Channel. <laughs> um, 
I, I, Brett, you put me off what I was going to say then. Oh, yes, because uh, I agree with you there because I said right at the start, didn't I, that out of everybody I've spoken to, and I've I had my picture taken with Vinnie Jones, and he's four foot nothing, and he's not as scary as, as you think. Um, it is Steve that, that scared me the most talking to, if you like. And what's amazing about him. He spent, he's, a, he's a Lancashire lad. He was born, his dad, like you say, he, he worked just outside Preston. I don't know where his dad worked. And um, he spent four years at Wigan. And yet, it's the four years at Leicester, even though I got the stats wrong. Thank you, Wikipedia. <laughs> four <laughs> years at Leicester. And that was what has stayed with him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and like you say, and, and you know, the, the questions we're asking him about him being captain and, and things like that. And you can, even now, you know, you can still see what it means to him. And I think, um, I think, you know, for, for the stature he's got at the club, even nowadays, you know, and, and you know, there's still, I don't, you know, there, there were banners with his face on and all sorts, you know, the like, along, alongside the likes, you know, Gary Lineker and Emmy Leskin, and play, yeah. players like that. And it just goes to show how much he still means, he still means to Leicester City. He's absolutely fantastic. So to get to talk to him and ask him questions, Chris, so I, I thank you for that. Yeah. It was uh, it re absolutely brilliant, really was. No, you, you, you're welcome, mate. I'm just going to bring this up again, not for the text, but that photograph, that picture there sums it up, doesn't it? You know, that, yeah. that, that win over, you know, the two goals he got against Derby. He was a defender, come strike when we needed him. That, like you say, be, if nothing else, he's remembered for that picture. Definitely, mate. And and uh, I think, you know, even like from, from memories I've got of watching him play at Philbert Street and such, you can always see, you know, the, the passion he had he had playing for us. And it, it's rare to see that. It's rare to see that in, in players at certain clubs nowadays. I think, you know, I think the one player currently plays, you know, Jamie Vardy, he, he springs to yeah. mind, you know, the passion he's got. Yeah. So it's very rare that you get players like, like Walsh you come along. So like you say, you've got to sort of appreciate, appreciate them as, as much as you can. It was unbelievable, really was. Yeah, yeah. Um, Brett just says here, um, very true, it's amazing to see how many ex-Foxes from that era decided to settle in Leicester, says a lot for the club. It, it does, it does. And, you know, if you, again, we're going to be talking to the guy soon. Um, the, 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 we had him on before, and it's the chief executive, Barry Pierpoint, from the 90s, hated by a lot of play, uh, lot of fans for the perceived fallout with the club. But I tell you what, what he made this club into, you know, he was bringing the Friday, Friday night football. He made it, and his team, because he, he, he won't take the credit himself, he's not that sort of guy, but him and his team made it into a family club. And it's moved on a little bit. You you can sense that, you know, you, you haven't got we as as fan you know as fan sites don't have the access maybe that we would have had when we were in League One and what have you. But that's natural. But mm. it is it is a fantastic a fantastic club. But you know we've got to stop this loving otherwise <laughs> 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 Steve Walsh is going to get a restraining order out against us. You can get to him now anyway. You know, you know what it was? When he started talking about Muzzy, is it? I thought, oh, God, yeah. don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, you know what I think? And I, 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 I was explaining to him, um, I told Mrs. that I was speaking to Steve Walsh today, what a, yeah. what a big deal it is for me, you know, in... She was saying, she, you know, she's asked me before, you know, who, what, you know, if any ex says, listen, if Muzzy it ever came on or ever bumped into Muzzy it, it would be like, I imagine it, it'd be like, you know, like if you had an Arsenal fan speaking to, you know, Thierry Henry or something like that, yeah. it'd be massive, absolutely massive. He's absolute god to be. He's, he's unbelievable, fantastic. So it would be, it, you know, like I say, to get the chance to, to speak to these ex players, it is, it's unbelievable for me. It really and, is amazing. And it's those players that when you first start to support that get, you know, that it, it, it they stay in your memory that bit longer, don't they? Because they yeah. were in the team when you started. Exactly. Yeah, definitely. Like say, you know, remember going down Philbert Street, seeing the likes of, you know, Jerry Taggart, who we spoke to the other week, you know, Tags yeah. and Walshie, Matt Elliott, Muzzy, is it Neil Lennon, Robbie Savage? It, it's unbelievable. It really is. It's, uh, you know, like, like I said, mate, you're making dreams come true, Chris. You really are. <laughs> well, um, Andy says here, are you getting a bit soft in your old age? I don't know if I'm getting soft or not, but um, but Josh had completely the opposite problem earlier. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's, a good, it's, a good, it's a good job that there are many, many miles between us, otherwise you'd be banging on my window coming to <laughs> my face. Josh, mate, it's been brilliant. We'll speak before Saturday. We'll see if we can get that watch along done. Uh, but if if not, we'll certainly do the pre-match show uh, as normal. It's a five past two kickoff because of Sky on Sunday, so it will be about quarter past two, I guess, for our, our show. Thanks very much for coming on, mate. Thanks for the questions. Thanks for helping us out with Walshie. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you on Saturday. Brilliant. Cheers, Chris. Thanks again, pal. Really appreciate it, mate. I'll speak to you on Saturday. You're welcome, mate. Take care. Bye-bye. Look after Bye -bye. yourself, pal. Cheers. Thanks to Josh there and um, for coming on and 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 uh, being my Tuesday chum. Um, let me just uh, make check, get rid of that there now. And um, yeah, we're going to have Barry Pierpoint coming on soon. He's got a book out which I haven't got handy, but I've got here um, managing my own foot managing with my own football business, and he's going to give away a free one. A signed copy free. So um, that's going to be coming up over the next week or so. And we're going to have him on. He's going to be chatting to us about that. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching. This has been Lester Till I Die. Um, remember, we are on YouTube, Lester Till I Die TV. Please, please give us a uh, subscribe on that channel. We're trying to get up to our first target of 500 by the end of the season. We're a little way off yet. If you can subscribe, if you know anybody that's a Leicester fan, get them to subscribe as well. And if you know anybody that's a Villa fan, get them to message me because I, I want to talk to one on Thursday. And if you want to catch this up uh, and listen to us rather than watch us, and I, I don't blame you, to be honest with you, we're available in podcast form, Leicester Till I Die, on Anchor on Google, on um, Apple iTunes, on Spotify, Podcast Addict, and you can even get us now on Amazon Music. And if you've got a smart speaker, just ask it to play the podcast Lester Till I Die. You have to put it in that order for some reason, so ask it to play the podcast Lester Till I Die, and it will bring up the last show for you. So you can get us all there if you want to listen to us while you're doing the washing up for the missus. That's where to find us. Guys, it's been great. Steve Walsh, amazing to have him on. Totally, totally, like Josh said there, heroes one and all. Heroes in blue and white, as the song says. And if you if you, if you haven't read it now, probably in the light, it's in the library, but it's also available on Amazon. Walsh's Fifty Shades of Blue. Amazing book. It is really, really worth the read. Take care, guys. I'll see you hopefully on Thursday at 7 o'clock with the Opposition View. And I'm going to try and get a West Ham fan on. And we'll have a bit of a natter and see how pleased they are with their season and what they think of David Moyes this season. They still hate him. He got you up to fourth, guys. We'll see you Thursday at 7. Stay safe. Goodbye Hello, now. Matt Elliott here. Be sure to watch Leicester Till I Die TV on YouTube and follow all their social media platforms for all the latest updates and news on Leicester City Football Club. Lester Till I Die podcasts on the Apple iTunes, Spotify, Google, Anchor, and all podcast platforms. Thanks for watching Lester Till I Die. This is Chris saying goodbye and see you next time.